Well, now as far as we could, the fort started raining. Probably made it better part of 70 feet down the line, which worked out all right because the chipper threw the bell on the feed roll drive and the saws got dull all about the same time it started raining, so no big deal. But, means you gotta get the saw sharpened again. So one bad thing about cleaning fencer was it ain't like cutting firewood. You're down in the dirt and the wood you're cutting is not the best in the world and it's, it beats the hell out of a chain. The only thing I don't like about this saw is the way they did the chain tension. I know why they did it, because the saw's not really big enough for the way they do it on a normal, or on a bigger saw with the two bolts and the jack screw, but it's just kind of a pain and you can't really get decent chain tension all the time. And I know some guys are probably going to make fun of me for using an electric saw sharpener, but man, this thing's slick. Especially when you're sharpening chains as much as you are cleaning fence rows. <laughs> Chain's about whooped too. Get home from exams. I have to run over to the steel dealer and get a new one for it.
And that's why this thing's awesome, because you can burn through a chain like nothing. And that one's done. Lickety split. Like I say, if all I was doing was cutting firewood where a chain had run most of the day and stay good and sharp, I'd love to learn to hand file a chain real good, but when you burn through a chain in three and a half, four hours, and you're sharpening them sometimes twice a day, get on there, you little prick. That electric sharpener is just so much better. He's trying to cramp up on me. Now the other day, this thing, just want to make sure. This is what I'm talking about on the tensioner on this is with that little this little finger wheel here you just can't grind it on a chain that's I can't remember what is that bar 16 inch bar I mean chain tension you don't gotta have it Lock down tighter than Fort Knox either, so. And the big saw. Actually, this is my MS391, and actually I got it from a fluke. We were back at my grandparents for Thanksgiving, and they were my—they were asking me what I wanted for Christmas, and my uncle 
worked in an Ace Hardware that was a steel dealer. And I was just joking. I said a chainsaw. And then Christmas Day, I opened this thing up and I figured if anything, I would have just got a little... If, if they did get me a saw, which I had never figured they actually would have, I figured what I would have gotten was a little farm boss like that. Nope, I get a big old MS-391 with a 25-inch bar. <laughs> Trying to remember how old I was when I got this. I think I just started driving, so I think I've had this saw since I was 16. And it's cut a lot of fence rows. <laughs> bar on it probably needs to be replaced here soon now before I do this chain I gotta change the stone but you guys already saw me sharpen another chain so I'll come back when I'm starting, or when I'm fixing the chopper, or fixing the All chopper. Right, I'm back a little early. So, I'm sure I, some of you noticed when I was using this saw, cutting wood earlier, it was, uh, well, doing less than still a job. And I figured out why. I don't know what the heck I got into, but when I was sharpening this thing, I had to take a heck of a lot of meat off, because for some reason, the leading edge on every tooth was curled underneath. And it was just a blunt edge. So I got no clue what the heck caused that particular problem. But it should be taken care of now, I hope. Had it up there on the sharpener, I'm looking at it going, what the hell? But the recurring theme of this video, when you're cutting on fence rows, you never know what the heck you're going to get into, so. This chain, I use more of a beater. I got a, I carry around two of them, and the one that's still on the box there is the one that I use when I'm actually cutting wood. Because I want to keep at least one in decent shape. I don't know how any of you guys were taught to do it, but whenever I'm tightening a chain on a saw, what I was always told is you're supposed to be able to pull the chain down till the guy or till the guides will just barely pull out of the rail, so that's still a little loose yet. A little bit more. Something about like that. But also, I tend to over tighten them a little bit when I take the chain off and put it back on because it's gonna, almost as soon as you start it up, it's gonna run loose anyway. So, a little more better. And yes, I know my bar's upside down. I'm trying to wear the top side because the bottom side's... The other thing I was always taught is you're supposed to... Uh, well, not always taught. I didn't find out till a while after I got the saw. You're supposed to flip your bar over every once in a while so it wears even on top and bottom. Well, I cut a lot of wood before I finally flipped that bar over, so... Now on to this bad mother.
this thing's made in China, so everything's on its metric and we just carry around its own set of tools with it. A lot of times, well not a lot of times, but sometimes this thing's I want to say they call for a 30 horse minimum on it, and that thing's 35, so there's times where it's all that poor little tractor wants, but she holds her own. My 1600 runs it a lot better, but it's just sitting there running wide open all the time. That tractor, a 66, is a whole lot easier on fuel, so and it ain't too often that we're cutting. Or that we're chipping wood that takes the maximum horse because anything that big we generally chunk up for firewood but every once in a while you get a piece that's not very it's like junk wood to begin with and you just we just chip it because it ain't worth it won't burn good and it just ain't worth cutting up i think this thing will go up to eight inches what it's rated for and we have ch that that tractor has run eight inch logs through it. She was angry, but she did it. No clue what caused that belt to jump like that. Only thing we could figure is a stick got wedged up under there and just rolled it off. Maybe I'll get I doubt I'll get lucky enough to just roll it back on. And One right in between the two I grabbed. That's 13. 13. 12. I'll tell you what, this thing right here, you kidding me, what dumbass, this thing right here tells you just what kind of engineering philosophy other countries have compared to like the United States or Europe or anything like that because there are some parts of this thing that you, you just look at it and you go, what What were they thinking? When we bought this, and brought it home and started using it, we were finding crap wrong with it left and right, and we actually re-engineered a bunch of stuff on this thing. We had to add a carrier bearing to the back of the, the uh, impeller shaft. We had to add some deflectors in the chute to keep crap from getting wedged on either side of the feed roll. We added a grease bank. What else did we? We had we'd had to do a bunch of crap to this. 
Oh, All right, sorry card. about that. Cody just called me. They just went down to an auction in Vincennes, Indiana yesterday and bought a Ford. Uh, two owner Ford TW20 with a cab for $18,000 and he was having a coronary and until he started or until he got home and started doing some researching on it and now he's kind of bragging about it so he changed changed his attitude awful quick but I told him there ain't no way they can go upside down on it because this tractor's a cherry I mean it was somebody's baby it's got new rubber on the on the inners on the back it came with duels that are probably 75 percent or better it's got new tires on the front the paint on it's immaculate I was actually really hoping to um, get our Super 77 diesel going this winter, but Dad had a job go south on him, so he's not going to have any money, and I still got seed to pay for, and I'm hoping to put new new inners on the back of the 1955 yet this winter. So there's going to be a big bill. So, I guess the old super is just going to have to wait another year, but I have to see how, see what, see how things go. I may, I may get it out this summer and at least get it tore down and start accumulating parts for it so that this winter it can uh, come up on the priority list. Part of the problem is... And don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining because I love having projects, but we got a lot of projects. Got that planning project, which I'm still not going to tell you guys what it is. It's not going to happen this, this winter like I hoped it would. Well, I shouldn't say that. It might. May at least start on it this winter. Got that super. Need to go through and get the front axle rebuilt on the 1955 because all the bushings are out on it. And need to get that spindle fixed. The 1600 needs new tires on the back because the sidewalls bulge in on one of them. Gonna put the loader on the 1600 yet this winter, hopefully. What else? Oh yeah, we need to start working on that barn up there at some point. Got a grain bin I need to get moved, which is going to happen this summer when the weather clears out. We've actually figured out how we're going to do that. Originally, I was trying to, going to find a place to rent some bin jacks, but the thought of taking down a bin all the way and then moving it and putting it back up all the way just didn't really appeal to me, regardless of whether the bin was free or not. And so we were... I was calling around to see how much places it would charge to move it. I only ever found one place that actually returned my phone call and they wanted $7,000 to move it. And I'm like, well shoot, for another three I could put up a brand new bin. So, that was out. But I was over there with, with Morley one day and we were looking at it and Got to thinking, well, you know, that bin's really, that bin's only 21 foot in diameter, and there's guys that drive down the road with eight row corn heads all the time, which are just a little over 21 feet, because if you add the snouts and everything in. And we were like, and we can get a telehandler that'll reach high enough to get over the top of the bin. 
And if we split it in the middle and took the bottom four rings and then the top three rings at the roof, we can get it legal height if we hold it on a low boy. Why don't we just tear it, tear it, split it down the middle, run a telehandler, get, get a semi and a low boy, which we, we have access to everything here on the list so far. We'll get it tore down on a Saturday and ready to move. And then Sunday morning, we'll just uh, get up bright and early in the a.m. And when there ain't no cops around, we'll... Well, I, you can see where this is going. So, that's the plan for moving that bin this summer. That ought to be a good video. Ought to look like the Three Stooges. Except with probably at least five guys. But man, I can't wait to get a bin. That's just going to be ideal. Alright, that's fixed. Saws are sharpened. So, we're ready to go back at it later this week when I get home. I may go down and do some chipping, or do some more chipping tomorrow because we actually ran ahead a little bit and that threw that belt before we had a chance to finish up a tree. So, I may go clean that up and do some odds and ends but I'm going back down to school tomorrow night for my exams Tuesday and Wednesday and then I'll be back home Wednesday for till January 10th because I go or classes start on the 11th so I guess that does it for this one we will catch you boys on the next one and girls I, I need to quit saying boys because there's girls subscribed to me now so I guess the more appropriate send that will be we will catch y'all on the next one.